Hello, I am Amir Hassan, and on Zvinitz today we will be talking about intracranial atherosclerotic disease, key considerations for stenting. ICAT is a significant cause of ischemic stroke, responsible for 10% of ischemic strokes in the U.S. and up to 50% in Asia. In South Texas, we have a 20 to 30% incidence. The disease process, you have a lot of plaque buildup, which leads to stenosis, increasing stroke risk. The key stroke mechanisms include hemodynamic compromise, artery artery embolism, in situ thrombosis, and perforator strokes. Current treatment approaches include medical management with anticoagulants, antiplatelets, and or statin therapy, interventions that include stenting and angioplasty. On cases with hemodynamic compromise, stenting has significant superiority over medical therapy. In a patient with a basilar stenosis, as you see here on the CT, correlating CT perfusion, stenting would benefit this patient much more than medical therapy versus a perforator stroke alone, as you can see here, this patient would do much better with medical therapy than intracranial stenting. Quick overview of the Sampras trial. There was a significant risk of instant stenosis. There was a significant risk of ischemic strokes. And what you had was the medical management arm doing significantly better than the intervention arm. And the trial was prematurely terminated. Then fast forward several years and we have the WEAVE trial. And the WEAVE trial results were published in Stroke in April 2019. And the main findings were if you stuck to the on-label primary analysis findings, you had a 2.6% event rate of stroke or death within 72 hours. Versus if you were off-label, those patients were collected in a registry and they had up to 23.9% risk of stroke or death within 72 hours. One of the lessons learned were adjacent perforators. You had to undersize the balloon in those lesions and your goal was 60 to 80% true lumen diameter. Also experience mattered. In studies where the enrollment sites had the experience of treating three cases or on average 10 cases like in Sampras, you had a much higher event rate. Whereas in Weave, the average interventionalist had placed 37 wingspan stents prior to enrollment. Those who had high experience, greater than 50 wingspan stents prior to their first patient enrollment in Weave had a 0% event rate. We have several studies that looked at our initial experience with the Resolute on Extent, a uh, balloon mounted stent that is drug coded, and then we looked at 30 day outcomes, comparing them to the Sampras uh, medical arm patients with propensity score matching, and we had a multi center study that included other balloon mounted stents. And what we found was that most of these patients did significantly better if you were on label, meaning you had to treat the patient and wait for seven days, maximize medical management with dual antiplatelet therapy and statin therapy. And we also found significant decreased restenosis rates, long-term restenosis compared to the wingspan study. And here are the publications, so you can look at them yourselves. The main points here are your tips and your setup for support based on our experience. And key point here is patient selection. Patients with severe tortuosity, type 3 arches, an M for a carotid artery, uh, common carotid, those cases probably be much more aggressive with your medical therapy before approaching stenting. In patients that you do select for stenting, we are very aggressive with P2I12 testing on all patients. If that P2I12 number is greater than 200, switch the patients to Berlinta, 90, gram, uh, 90 milligrams BID. My partner does use 60 milligrams BID, and we have not found a significant difference between my patients and his patients. Uh, we always use a bolt ballast or a BMX guide catheter. We find that's much more supportive. If treating anterior circulation, you will have a lot of difficulty with the radial approach. So we primarily prefer femoral access. If you're treating lesions proximal to the paraclinoid segment of the carotid, Navien 058115 is the most supportive DAC. But if you're treating an MCA lesion, it doesn't cross the paraclinoid ophthalmic segments, so a CAT5 or SOFIA EX 115 centimeter is the preferred distal axis catheter. We always use Zoom 14 support wire. That is our preferred wire, our 014 wire. Synchro 2 support if you don't have the Zoom 14, or you can use the Aristotle 14 support wire. Regular Synchro 2 and Traxxas just don't have enough support. We highly recommend the Resolute Onyx 2x8mm device because it can comfortably increase in size to about three and a quarter with post dilatation. And for all our MCA M1 lesions and our mid basilar lesions, your perforator rich territories, I don't care if your MCA or basilar already measures three, three and a half millimeters, we always use a Resolute Onyx 2x8. Thank you very much and have a great day.